When I created Byte, like literally to become an LLC, I did it by watching YouTube videos and just following the steps. Lindsay, you have something really rare that very few people come in here with these kind of sales. Two years later, and not only was Lindsay appearing on Shark Tank, she turned down an offer from Mark Cuban. What was the last time that even happened? It's not every day you say no to a billionaire, but that meant that I could make every decision that I wanted to for the best interests of the planet and our customers. And I get that toothpaste is a really weird thing to get super passionate about, but I just wanted to solve a problem. Did you know over one billion plastic toothpaste tubes end up in our landfills and our oceans every single year? Bite offers a sustainable alternative. Toothpaste tablets that come in glass jars and compostable refill pouches. There's zero plastic from start to finish. When I first started Bite, it was incredibly hard to not compromise. But it's a hard road, whichever way you go. So you might as well do what you believe in. You just started your dream business. How much profit would you need to pay your basic living expenses like rent and ramen? This is a show on the economics of entrepreneurship and founders turning their dreams into reality. This is Ramen Profitable. I started Bite in my living room. The year was 2017. I come from like a TV background. I was traveling all the time for work and I was going through those tiny little toothpaste tubes and it seemed so wasteful. So I started making my own. I actually tried like a hundred different things that didn't work. I ended up taking online chemistry classes, talking to dentists, mental hygienists, until I finally came up with a powdered formula that I put into a tablet. This is actually how I was making toothpaste tablets for a very long time. You just take the ingredients, mix them up, and then press it out. I like have jammed my finger in this machine so many times, like backed up on orders and like fighting with the machine. And I look back at it and I'm like, those were like the best times. Ta-da! I was still working full time. And then I was on bite until two or three in the morning every night. But that really helped me because that same work ethic and those same hours still apply. And then we had a video go totally insane viral on Facebook. So your first month you get a bottle and a recyclable box filled with six months of towels. I was just getting these notifications on my phone. Like I thought that my site had gotten hacked. Uh, we didn't have a manufacturer. We didn't have a fulfillment center. My boyfriend, who's now my co-founder, jumped in full time with me doing the website development and all of the photos and the creative, and we basically had to war room the situation. There we go. I like that. Yeah. It's like the Beatles walking across the yeah. street. We need like a little cactus. Go get it. Yeah. In its first year, Byte had done $6,000 in sales. After they went viral, they did 200,000 in a week. Having a video go viral is like literally a dream scenario. And then actually being in the moment, it was the most stressful time in my entire life. We might be pushing the launch like two days. Okay. Yeah. Right, so we need to have those before and after. The insanity like, paid off. Through social media, Byte found a customer base with an interest in sustainability. Lindsay put the profits back into developing new eco-friendly products, like mouthwash tablets and a bamboo toothbrush. But there was a problem. As a small business, the cards are already kind of stacked against you having to have a sustainable supply chain and, and wanting to make these choices, it just becomes even harder. Let's talk about a huge sustainability crisis you may never have even heard of, palm oil. Palm oil is used to make all kinds of products, cosmetics, food, and even fuels. But its rapid harvest has decimated forests in Indonesia and Malaysia and destroyed habitats for endangered orangutans. We initially had EcoCert palm oil in our toothpaste tablets. And the point of EcoCert palm oil is that it's supposed to not come from those areas. But not everything is like black and white. Our customers were saying, you should really look into the palm oil certification process. There's a transparency issue. So I started digging into it. And Byte's customers were right. When Lindsay dug deeper, she couldn't verify that the palm oil they were using was actually sustainable. By our customers calling it out, my eyes were open to that issue, and we decided to completely reformulate. I think when it comes to making the choice of how to be more sustainable, it's literally just doing it. It was not easy in any way, but for us as a business, it was a no-brainer. It meant like our pricing's going up, 
Our sourcing is now different. Our formula is now different. All those changes represented a lot of expense, but Lindsay decided not to pass on the markups. Byte absorbed the increased cost instead to do right by their customers. On Earth Day of last year, we became 100% palm oil free. And a few months after going palm oil free, our sales basically doubled. For me, that was just a reminder that doing good in business is good for business. It's really important for us to make money and be profitable because that proves to other businesses that are looking at us that what we're doing works. So if you're starting your business to solve a problem, stick with it. It might get hard, it might be the rockier path, but in the end, it's worth it.